Good morning. Still the world's most advanced and powerful electric motorbike. Today we have the Energica Ego Plus RS. What a stunning Italian beauty. There's no irony in this hat, by the way. Thanks for noticing. Welcome to the channel. My name's Richie Vida. Thanks very much for being here. So today we have the Energica Ego Plus RS. This is the flagship of the Energica company. And what an absolutely stunning piece of kit it is. I've not had an electric bike in for quite a while, so I'm very much looking forward to this. So this is the RS version, which is faster than the standard version. The standard produces 0 to 60 at 2.8 seconds. <laughs> this is quicker. 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds with a limited speed of 150. Purely electric. I've not ridden it at all yet. Just brought it from home to here, which isn't far. In these stunning tricolor Italian colors. Red, white, and green. She is an absolute beauty. When this was dropped off last night, I was like, oh. There's not many bikes that look nicer than a Ducati, but I'm not saying this does, but it's in the same realm for sure. Let's go and have some fun on it. I don't expect to be able to see much through these mirrors. Jesus! Oh my god. Yeah, can't see anything through the mirrors. I can see my nice Risha jacket. That's what I can see. <laughs> what a beautiful looking machine this is. The riding position is full sports bike. So I feel like my knees are under my chin. It's showing that we've got 94% battery with a range of 80 miles. 8-0. Did you hear that noise then? So when you let off the throttle, that's like your engine braking. So it will regenerate the battery. Look down just above the speedo. You've got like a energy consumption bar at the top. So when you give it some, that'll go up, watch. When you let off, I'll be able to do it better in a minute. When you let off the throttle, it goes into the blue, which is regenerating the battery. It's weird having no sound. It's been a good couple of years since I've had an electric in. With the DC charging, between 20 to 80% should take around about 18 minutes. And that's the optimum area of charge, really, where you should be using it. Stick it on charge when you're at home to do it fully. But when you're out and about, just charge from 20 to 80. It's the first 20% and the last 20% that's the hardest and takes the longest to charge. Try and work between 20 and 80% all the time when you're out. This is the most powerful. We'll back end twitched again then. There's a lot of juice through that back end. There's 222 newton meters of torque on this bike. So it is absolutely rapid. Absolutely rapid. Limited to 150, not 60 and 2.6. Just wanting to wheelie as well. Wow. That regeneration is really quite strong and like I said that's only in medium. I'm going to try it in the highest mode as I will with everything else, all the different riding modes just to see. But yeah, so see the progress bar, the green. Watch now and I let off. Heavily into the blue look. If you spank this bike in sport mode you're probably going to be getting about 70 miles to a tank. And I wouldn't think you'll see three figures mileage wise even riding it conservatively and in eco mode. I'm hoping to try and um, disprove that though. Heavy lump at 262 kilos. Styling, this has to be the nicest electric bike I've ever seen so far. It has got that touch of Italian 
finesse about it. Gotta say, my wrists are hurting already. That's just me though. I'm not used to riding sports bikes. This bike I'm on, this model, is the flagship of the Energica company. And this retails <laughs> round about the £32,000 mark. With all the bits this has on it, the carbon bits, it's about £32,000. So these bikes are still crazy expensive, crazy expensive. Can't say it's the most comfortable thing I've ridden. Sounds like a police car. <laughs> it does sound like when you rev it and then let go, it's just police car. I don't suppose anybody else will hear that apart from me. So it's not going to scare any cars in front thinking that there's a popo behind them. The brakes are lovely. Oh, my neck's killing already. It's got cruise control, although it's in a very strange position. It's on your right hand, throttle hand, but it's out of reach of your thumb. What? Heated grips, ABS traction control, obviously. It's weird, you know, when you pull up to a stop and there's no sound at all, just nothing. No tyre noise, no engine noise, no whirring of the electric motor, nothing. It's like you've st just like you've stalled. It's actually a bit too easy to speed, so you really have to keep your eye on that. I think with the lack of engine noise, or, you know, vibrations under your balls, or whatever it is that you might have on your anatomy. It's, yeah, you, you, you don't have the, the engine tone or the vibes to make you realise how fast you're going. Because there's nothing, just the whir of the motor. The red of the suit matches the bike. <laughs> Love stuff like that. This is a nice sensation, actually. When you do pull up to a junction and you've essentially stalled, it's just nice. Strangely, the range has gone up a bit. We've got 88% battery. I guess this is because it's reading how I'm riding. And it's gone up to 106 mile range. Can't see that to be true, but interesting all the same. Acceleration is unbelievable. I would very much like to try it on dry, fully dry roads though. <laughs> I don't even think I've cracked 20% of the throttle range yet. Yeah, wow, it really does... really does slow you down, that does. Highest engine braking. That's just like you've got your brakes on, wow. Okay, so I am a massive fan of night riding. So I thought I'd come out and take a little night ride with it. But first of all, we need to go and charge. So I'm going to go to a charging point that I've just found. A DC uh, super fast charge. Not too far away from here. We've only got 27% left. So I'm going to go and sample this charging station, first of all. And then we're going to go for a ride into the pitch black country lanes just so I can show you what this is like at night. We're just approaching the fuel station. No one there, which is good. See how much it's gonna cost us. Here we go. Okay, so we're gonna do the seat. which then holds itself up. And then under here we've got the AC and the DC. Now hopefully one of these charging points is gonna be the bad boy. 
the time at the moment is uh, look at her, nearly six o'clock so I would suggest by the time I've figured out what's going off uh, touch here how do you get this out there we go okay so put that in there like that DC fast charge initialization start and also see that little lever there there that pops up when you start charging yeah so that now I could basically walk off and go and do what I need to do while it's charging and this cannot be removed from the bike so the bike basically the bike can't go anywhere so you can just go off do your thing come back in what 20 minutes time we will of course hang around and then the only way to get that to release is putting your own key in your ignition estimated time left to 80% is 20 minutes that's really good because at home it takes hours I tell you the more time I spend with this the more I love it it's hard to ride not hard uncomfortable because it's a sports bike I'm not into sports bikes but I'm getting used to it I've probably done about 200 miles on it I think charging at home overnight it really is a stunning looking bike <laughs> turns heads I've loved it it's just a shame I've not had any more time with it had it not been needed for the NEC I'd have had it for a bit longer thank you very much to Energica and to English Electric Motor Company for the loan I've been fast I've been slow through towns I've done nighttime riding I've not had time to clean it yet it's been interesting to see how much it's cost me to do this 52% only got 30% left 10 more minutes see it's pretty cool this you know because you can just chill out for a bit luckily it's not raining obviously that was my other concern actually right now if it was to be chucking it down what's going off with all this hmm weird yeah, it's pretty cool just to chill out I mean um, Clay Cross in uh, Chesterfield or near Chesterfield and it also which I think is very cool makes perfect sense but hadn't occurred to me at the time whenever it's regenerating the brake lights on you're not physically braking but the bike is slowing down rapidly so it activates the brake light makes perfect sense the cruise control is in a ridiculous position see your hands there look you get your gloves on you can barely reach that and it is a bit clunky to do that as well but what I want to show you this isn't the first night ride I've done but I wanted to take you out and show you my thoughts on it because this re this bit really lets it down I went out the other night for a, a decent run I love riding at night I went out for a really good ride and I love dark country roads I love it that's where I'm happy I, I just love it um, and quite frankly it's frightening because you just can't see anything the main beam sorry the normal headlights light up quite a big area down here the second you put it onto main beam all this side view disappears it throws out a beam a really narrow beam and weirdly lights all this area up here but throws a beam right out there but you can't see even the littlest bit left or right you just can't see it so when you're coming into like a corner you cannot see around the corner it's quite uh, quite frightening even to the point the ride that I went to the destination I went to should I say I decided to come back the main roads whether you got your street lamps because it was just safer obviously when you're riding at night especially in the country you've got to be scanning the roads for critters or anything and uh, yeah it's not uh, it's not doable on this it really isn't so what I'm going to do when we're charged I'm going to take us uh, into these said country roads that I was just on about 76% one minute remaining let's see what happens had I filled it up at BP over the road it would have been what to fill a tank up what is it nowadays 30 quid let's see what this is going to cost us range 94 miles 80% uh, maybe it'll just keep going yeah so that was just an indication to let you know the time left 280 and we'll cut it off now we're at 80 but I guess otherwise it'll just carry on charging till it gets to 100 
Right, so let's see what we do then. So, touch here. Oh, uh, maybe I just turn the ignition on. I've already done that, haven't I? So, we'll do that then. Let's try it. I would assume that once I turn this on, that will just lower itself and then stop charging. I'm going to turn the ignition on. Press mode to unlock. There we go. So that has now finished charging and it has cost us oh, £7.50. £7.55? Energy charge 9.5 kilowatts. 82% battery status. 23 minutes it took us. £7.54. So take that off. That's that. Thank you very much. We're now on 82% with a 100 miles range. Just lower that. Excellent. Right, let's go and have a look what it's like to ride this at night. Go. Quite a pleasant experience that was. Right then, this is where it gets dark, no street lamps. You'll see what I mean in a sec. And I do hope this comes across alright, so you can barely see them people. Let's go to main beam. See that now, lot? Can't see at all around that corner. One thing that I really do love though is this. So obviously you've got your engine whine, which you do get used to, got on my nerves at first, but you do get used to it and now I really like it. When you pull up to a junction. Especially in the countryside. It's just nothing. Apart from the sound of a car coming towards us. With his main beam on. Thanks very much for that. Right, we'll go up this way where it's darker. Right, so this is your standard. Really can't see anything. I'll flick the main beam on now. So we can see into the distance a bit. But look how narrow the beam is. It's literally just the road. And then if the road turns, you can't see. <laughs> See, look at that, look at that. Couldn't see that the road were turning then. And this is why I chose to come back on the roads that have uh, street lamps, because this is horrible. I just can't see anything round the corner. Look, look at that down there, you can't see anything, look, of the road. You can't see anything around a corner at all. Normal beam is showing around the corner a bit. Look at this. It's just, that's main beam and it's took the corner off completely. So there you have it. This is one hell of a machine. It's beautiful to look at. It's so fast. I would say you probably could squeeze a hundred mile out of it. If you behaved just not really the kind of bike that you want to be riding around country lanes at night on but yeah what a stunning example and I'm very uh, pleased to have had it in I've actually lost my bearings a bit Where am I? well you can see what I mean now you've got no sense of peripheral really if any critters jumped out you'd have no time to react the corner goes that way and I can't see around it lot That said, it is bloody fantastic. Just ride it in the daytime, simple as that. Expensive, of course it is, but so are most EVs. I'm gonna get in, get this in the garage, crack open a nice bottle of Italian Rioja. Thanks very much for watching. I've been Richie Vida. This has been the Energica Ego Plus RS. And it is bloody fantastic. Thanks all, take care. See you soon.
Jesus Christ, that is quick.